Welcome to the eBioprocess Software Training Series, presented by Infors HT. This series will guide you through every step of using the eve software platform, from logging in, to planning and starting a batch, to monitoring your run, and adding new devices to your eve software. Let's begin. Welcome to our bioprocess software, Eve. I have the login page open here in a web browser. Eve is browser-based and supported on all modern browsers. It only requires one installation on your network so that any user on your internal network can open a web browser and access Eve by IP address or host name without installing any software on their computer. This also means remote access is possible by VPN if your IT team allows it. Now we will log in and look at the dashboard. This is the Eve dashboard. The running batches are shown here. If you would click the zigzag or graph icon, we can go into those batches. On the bottom left are the planned experiments, which have been named but not started yet. On the right side is the audit trail of all the recent actions in Eve. On the top right, we have a question mark button, which opens up the Eve manual. It is very detailed, but I hope you find Eve to be so intuitive that you don't need to reference it. And on the left-hand side are the tabs for the different sections of Eve. Let's take a look at the libraries. The batch library is your experimental database. Uh, Eve is not just spitting out files and folders for you to manage. It is an experimental database where you can search on the batch name, project name, username, et cetera. Each entry holds data from one batch or one vessel. Pressing on the graph icon will allow you to access the experimental graph, whether it's ongoing or complete. You can archive an experiment or you can export it as an e-file to share with someone else, or a CSV file to load into a Excel, or send it to the recipe database. You can also generate a report, which we'll show later. There are also libraries for your recipes, your organisms, your culture media, and your compounds. The compound library is the only one that's pre-filled out, and of course you can easily add more compounds. There are also libraries for your software sensors, any scripting methods, and your audit trail. Let's plan and run a batch. We have a single batch and multiple batch option. For the multi-batch, we can choose a name and a project and the number of vessels we are working with. Every vessel will have its own entry in the batch library, and the name and project will be the same for all the vessels. Single batch and multi batch have the exact same workflow, except at the end of planning for the multi batch, we have the chance to edit any differences between the batches before pressing start. So they can have different media, different organisms, or even different strategies. For now, let's do a single batch. Every batch has to have a unique name. Description is optional. We can choose a project from our list of projects. And again, a project is just a keyword that is searchable in our library so we can find related batches easier. If we click Load Recipe, it'll bring up our recipe database. And if we want to select something, it will fill out all the remaining steps based on a previous experiment. We will select a free vessel here. And then we'll take a look at our parameters. First, we see all of our touchscreen parameters, and we can start these on or off individually, or all off or all on. This is also where we can edit the default set point and choose our alarm types, whether we want them fixed, dynamic, or just completely off. There's also an option to log the set point for troubleshooting purposes. However, I'll note that the set points here are not particularly important because we are going to be setting the batch strategy soon. And the lower and upper alarms are not necessarily important because the system will give us an alarm if it's failing to control a parameter. Besides touchscreen parameters, we also have offline parameters. So when you take a sample and then you get data elsewhere, you can bring that data back and enter it as an offline parameter. So for example, turbidity or some kind of metabolite might be manually measured and then come back to Eve. There's also the option for soft sensors. So that's a software sensor. If you need to calculate something, uh, provide a correction or correlation 
or calibration, you can do all of that with a software sensor and it'll show up live in your graph and be treated just like any other parameter. Next, we'll go to the organism page. This is optional. You can choose an organism from your library. If you know your inoculation volume and concentration, you can fill it out now, but it will also ask you when you are ready to inoculate. So there will be an inoculation button and you can fill it out then. You could select your culture media. You can edit the amount of media, the pH, and if you've added some kind of compounds to it, you can even start typing and choose the compound from your list. From there, you can edit the concentration and amount. And if you've edited the compounds, if you've edited your culture media, you can even save it to the library and reuse this media again later. So we've added a batch media, but we could also add a feed media, acid base, antifoam, or inducer. And all this is for record keeping purposes. Next is batch strategy. We have a phase-based planning strategy. You can add more phases by clicking the plus button or delete a phase by clicking the trash icon. You can rename the phases as desired. Within each phase, you can change the set points. Or if you leave the set points blank, it will continue on with the previous set point. You can also turn parameter control on or off by clicking on the slider. The transition condition is contained within the orange diamond between each phases. By default, the first one is when you click the batch inoculation button. But you can also choose conditions such as time or a parameter comparison. Next to every set point field are these ellipses. When you click on this, you bring up some pre-made functions, such as a ramp function or a step function. And you can choose these and edit them. So I'm choosing right now a ramp function, and I'll slowly ramp up the stir speed, starting in the batch phase, and then going on into the growth phase. So you can have these functions continue through multiple phases. If that doesn't give you enough control, you can also choose this orange plus button over here to make a custom function. You can choose which phase this starts and ends in. You can have different custom functions in different phases. You'll just give it a name. Description is optional. And then in this field, you can type in your code in C sharp. And you can see the scripting guide for more detail here, but it allows you to create uh, custom parameters, do if-then comparisons, and this is where you could also use a go-to statement. Once your batch strategy is ready, you will click the Start button to begin. Let's take a look at a live graph. The batch time is listed on the top, along with the current phase and time in that phase. These graphs are highly customizable. You can choose which parameters are on which axes or hide them. You can click on the parameter name to change the marker, color, or line thickness. You can click on the numbers on the y-axis to change the min, max, or auto scale. You can highlight a section of the graph to zoom in or edit the x-axis. You can click on the parameters button to see the parameters from the touchscreen, turn them on or off, or edit the set points. Click on the batch strategy button to see the batch strategy and even make changes to it. 
you click on the compare batches button to put multiple batches onto the same graph. This helps with comparing batches that are running at the same time or with comparing a new experiment to a previous experiment. You can inoculate your batch or view the inoculum information at any time. There is a logbook, so any notes that you typed are time stamped and cannot be edited or changed later. There are offline samples, so you can click to take a new sample, record the volume that you took, and then you can come back later on and enter in those values, and then they will be shown on the graph and exported with the rest of the data. You can also see the batch information that you filled out in the beginning. And you can stop the batch. The Monitor and Analyze tab allows for a spreadsheet-like view of all the currently running batches. If there are any errors or warnings, those fields will be highlighted. It is a nice way to quickly see what all the parameters are doing across all the batches in one glance. You can click on the zigzag icon to go into any one of these batches and view the graph and make changes from there. In the batch library, we can create reports. If I choose this paper icon, I can create a report. If it's a multi-batch, I can choose which vessels I want to be in the report. I can choose which components to be or not be in this report. I can include or exclude parameters from the report. And I can even choose to have averaged or raw data points in the report. Once I click Preview, it will automatically create this report, including a cover page, table of contents, graphs, and whatever other components I selected for this report. Here we go, cover page, table of contents, batch overview, culture media, logbook, et cetera. And I can choose to save this as a PDF file or a few other formats. And saving that will bring it to my downloads folder. Equipment is added to EVE over the network. We have drivers for Infor's equipment, third-party bioreactors, and many OPC-based sensors. We can also create custom drivers. Once a driver is selected, enter in the IP address. You can easily tie a sensor or balance to a vessel by clicking the orange plus button. And then all the data will be correlated together, so it'll show up in the graphs and the exported data. If you click on the vessel icon, you can get into more advanced parameter settings. Thank you for joining us and exploring the power of Inforce HT's EVE Bioprocess Platform software. To learn more and take your bioprocessing to the next level, reach out to your local Inforce HT sales representative or visit www.inforce-ht.com.